Hello Internet, I'm Jackie Fox and this is How to Talk Like a Leftist, Episode 2. Recently I was trying to find some common ground with a right-lib friend of mine, and as a part of that exchange I felt I should explain my take on leftism, so he wouldn't make right-wing assumptions. I basically wrote an essay on the topic for him, so I figured it might be enlightening to share with you. And so it begins. I consider myself to be an anarchist more than anything else or a libertarian if you go with the more general original definition before it was redefined as a purely capitalist position. I like to think I have a fairly good understanding of this as a concept, and I often argue with other anarchists about what the term means. For example, here's an argument I'm making in a video where I was talking to another quote unquote anarchist. And so you don't assume, I'll just give you my definition of what it means to me because it guides how I search for answers to huge problems. That being said, this isn't really a definitive answer to what is anarchism, and I don't think that you should really reasonably expect to get a good answer on such a nuanced philosophy from such a short video. But maybe it helps you understand some things, so it's worth watching, I think. I'm quoting Wikipedia here because their top line answer was surprisingly decent and nuanced. Anarchism is a political philosophy and movement that is skeptical of authority and rejects all involuntary, coercive forms of hierarchy. Anarchism calls for the abolition of the state, which it holds to be undesirable, unnecessary, and harmful. I focus on the first part of that definition and use it to understand the second. To me, rejects all involuntary, coercive forms of hierarchy doesn't mean the same thing as no government but instead says that any form of government must be justified by the people under its power. This requires a very direct model of democracy that uses consent and decentralization to mitigate a tyranny of the majority. Though you could say that an acceptable form of anarchist government would be so different from what we currently have that it would be ridiculous to refer to it as a state at all. But really, I think we're just getting into semantics at this point. The total abolition of government while retaining capitalism is just feudalism with extra steps. If you still societally value the individual accumulation of resources, what's to stop someone from purchasing a state and ruling it like a king? Or from buying an army and steamrolling their neighbors with sheer force? The non-aggression principle is a cool idea, but without a mechanism of enforcement, it's utopian to think that it wouldn't just devolve into warlords and feudal states. So in that case, I think it's justified to have a state with a standing voluntary militia to mitigate the danger of this or of a foreign force. Though, once you start using that army to expand your borders via force, it's no longer justifiable. Another example of a justified use of state power might be establishing building codes to protect people from death trap housing. So in thinking about the ways that things could be changed, I'd like to see more direct democratic power given to the people. I think that concept is appealing under the right conditions to the left and the right. I get the fear of tyranny of the majority, which as I said above, is why I would advocate the consent be factored in as well. Instead of representatives, we could use the internet to vote on everything. But not as a yes no vote, more like yes, no, and absolutely not. You'd get action through a majority supermajority vote of yes, but if and only if there wasn't a significant absolutely not vote. The definition of majority or significant in that previous sentence would have to be something that we would figure out through trial and error. So I'd also say that fundamental things like that could be determined by general approval. If that approval falls below a certain level, we should rethink our foundational ideas in a way that seeks to boost approval. I think that decentralization is important as well. In the US, it's practically impossible to make countless specific rules that work across such a diverse population. It would become important to break down monopolies of government power such as our federal government, to a certain extent. This would confer power to the states and might actually make some places less hospitable in some ways to some people. This is where freedom of movement and ease of immigration become important. And while this is something that right libs talk about in addressing a similar concern, I think they're missing a really crucial idea that makes this work for the people. The recognition of housing and jobs for those who want them as a human right. Otherwise, freedom of movement is only a freedom if you can afford it. Breaking that barrier creates societies that allow people to find their own utopia. Overall, it means the majority generally gets what they want, so long as they don't harm a significant minority. 
And if you're not large enough to meet the definition of significant, you can freely, in every sense of the word, move to a place where you are more significant or even in the majority. And while I think that capitalism has some serious inherent flaws preventing much of this, for example, it seems to require the power of an authoritarian state to enforce, and think that socialism, which is when the state controls the means of production and allows free access to all workers equitably, but especially communism, where workers control the means of production without a state, would be an ideal way of moving closer to this utopia. I'd want these anarchist ideals put in place first, and then I would allow people to freely make that choice for themselves. As you might have noticed in my last video, due to all of the viral misinformation that I was seeking to incorporate into that video and debunk, unfortunately that corrupted my end credits, and I can't use them anymore. Which is probably for the best. So first, I would like to point out these folks who I am subscribed to and and have not yet reached a thousand subscribers here on YouTube. So go check out their channels, like their videos, and give them a subscribe. But I also have to thank all of my patrons as well. It is my mission not to accept corporate donations to this channel, and I really think of advertising as being a corporate donation. I mean, really, it's just a major corporation throwing a couple of pennies at you per ad in order to use your social clout to influence people who might be in your audience. And you, my audience, I would like to save from that as much as possible. So, since I can't make any money off of advertising through that model, I have to rely on your donations. And if you want to make a regular donation, that can be done through Patreon. But if you would also like to just send me a cup of coffee for a job well done on a particular video, there's coffee as well. No matter what you choose, it's very much appreciated. 